If my channel has proved one thing, it's that an iPad can be used for more than just entertainment. Today, I'm setting out to prove that not only can the iPad be used as a dashboard to your life, but it can also be used as a server. A few years ago, I bought a 7th gen iPad. Now, I bought this iPad to review and test accessories against, but after a while, I just wasn't using it for that stuff anymore. But I didn't want it to go to waste. So I started to look into options about how to use an iPad that, well, you're not using it every single day. I knew at the core of my dashboard, I wanted a way to easily trigger shortcuts that control different aspects of my life. My shortcut library is too big to just have that app open. So I started using MFC Deck. This basically turns your iPad into a stream deck, but for shortcuts. What's great about this is you can set up different decks. So I made one specifically for this wall mounted iPad. This contains shortcuts for music and podcast playback, as well as controlling smart home devices. After the shortcut is triggered, the device will go back to MFC deck so it can be used again. I can easily create new decks, add more shortcuts, and even add specific triggers. Right now, I'm just scratching the surface of what I can do with this app. I've been thinking about putting an old iPhone on my desk so I can run work-specific shortcuts from there as well, but for right now, my wall-mounted iPad is perfect. HomeDash is a really interesting app if you have a lot of HomeKit devices. This allows you to build a custom dashboard with all different kinds of buttons and controls. You can set it up so you can toggle devices, see statuses, and if you have cameras, you can even see images from that. Unfortunately, I can't deck my house out with all these different devices like cameras, locks, or even doorbells. I'm stuck with just smart light bulbs and some smart switches. But if you plan on wall mounting an iPad or iOS device and want to easily control HomeKit devices from a dashboard, check out HomeDash. I'd like to thank Paperlike for sponsoring this video. Paperlike is a channel sponsor and one of my favorite iPad accessories. What it is, is it's a screen protector for an iPad and they have screen protectors for all the different iPad sizes. And what it does is it adds a texture to the iPad. So when you're using the Apple Pencil and you're writing on the iPad, it gives kind of this texture feedback. Like it, 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 that, it feels more like writing with pen and paper. I really like this device and I use it every single day on both of the iPad Pros that I have. I will put my link to where you can get one in the description below. At its core, PushCut is an app used to send custom notifications based on time or locations. These allow you to trigger shortcuts, HomeKit scenes, and stuff like webhooks. On my phone, I have two triggers for 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. These remind me to take my meds and run my blood glucose log shortcut. Triggers are local, so this only appears on my phone and subsequently my Apple Watch. But for my wall-mounted iPad, I use the Automation tab. This gives you a way to trigger shortcuts and home cut scenes through the web. Once you have PushCut all set up and have imported your shortcuts, you can go into the list of shortcuts and home kit scenes. Tap on one to get the URL associated with it. If you were to run this URL while the PushCut server is running, it will trigger this shortcut. On the surface, this is kind of boring, but when you bring in a physical piece of hardware, like the Philips Hue Smart Dimmer Switches, it gets a little more interesting. These are four button HomeKit compatible smart switches. Once set up in the Home app, you can program each button. Typically, these just control HomeKit scenes, but if you scroll to the bottom and hit Convert to Shortcut, this gives you a stripped down version of shortcuts with just actions that run in the background with no manual interaction. Use the Get Contents of URL action, paste the URL we got from Shortcuts in here, and change the method to Post. If we run this now with the PushCut server active, this will trigger our shortcut. The benefit of doing this is you get access to all the shortcut actions, not just the stripped down versions in the home app. This means you get access to third party apps as well. I use this to trigger custom scenes for filming modes, HomePod playback, and even my whole studio setup. With a web service like Zapier, you can trigger PushCut from different sources. I have a zap that watches the Apple Newsroom feed. When something new is added, I get a notification through PushCut. 
Zapier passes that URL along, so when I tap on that notification, it opens right to that post. This is great if you need to keep an eye on a specific RSS feed. I have two other zaps for project management. The first is when a new record is added to my video idea Airtable database. This triggers a shortcut through Pushcut that creates a new note in Craft so I can write down any ideas and thoughts I have about that project. Now, creating a note in Craft isn't hard, but I have this automation so it happens every time and it's one less thing I have to remember. The second project management zap I have is for when I mark a project as currently working on in that Airtable database. Again, this triggers a shortcut via Pushcut. It takes the title of that video from the Airtable database, creates a toggle project, a project and things, and then fills in all the steps as tasks in that things project. There's a ton of triggers you can use with Zapier. I'm just scratching the surface in this video, so be sure to check it out. So that's it for this video. I'm curious if you guys plan on doing something like this or if you're already doing something like this, what are you doing? Let me know in the comments. I really wanna hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.